Another week, another list. The hottest comic books in the cosmos. And, Jem, we're going to need some backup with number 10. Yeah, I don't know much about Golden Age comics, but I got a buddy who does. In a 10 is something special, something different. This is Planet Comics number one. There's no first appearance here. There's no origin here. This is just a coveted book by Dave Stevens. Now, if you're not familiar with Dave Stevens, please go check out the documentary Drawn to Perfection that just came out about five months ago about his life. Extremely entertaining and well worth the watch. Hint, hint, he was also the creator of The Rocketeer. But let's get back to this book and discuss it and why it's on this list. In January of this year, a 9.8 sold for $1,227. Three months later in March, a 9.8 sold for $1,295. That's up 6%. Another copy of this book sold for $1,875. That's up 53% from the January sale. And another one sold that same day, 87% higher from that January sale for $2,291. Those are pretty remarkable numbers for a pretty modern book. There's 433 graded copies of this book, 68 of which are in a 9.8. So it's not that rare. It's just the Dave Stevens effect. And maybe because this book is a twofer. The front covers of Dave Stevens, the back covers of Dave Stevens. Uh, it's also based off of a Golden Age title that was fantastic and loved by many, many Golden Age collectors, uh, also called Planet Comics which ran for 73 issues from 1940 to 1947. I think that's why we're seeing a spike in the pricing for his stuff. His body of work is small, his demand is high, and it's only going to increase. He's best known though for the creation of the Rocketeer and an unbelievable pinup style that he brought to comics and almost updated it to where you find magnificent, beautiful women figures and great action poses. He's got an unbelievable inking and brushstroke style that instantly resonates with anybody who's looking at a piece of his artwork. So if you're finding his work appealing, go check it out. After this video, of course, as we're sending you back to studio for number nine. Thanks so much for that, Jeff. You're going to want to make sure to follow the Golden Age Guru over on Instagram to keep up on all the old and the gold. And next on the list at number nine, we have Batman 189, the third appearance of the Scarecrow, but the first appearance in the Silver Age. And I can't help but think that this has to do with the Solo Penguin series that's going to be debuting on HBO Max. Not the Scarecrow series, but it kind of opens the door to other rogues that we'll see during the show. It's crazy to think that Matt Reeves was already planning to do a Penguin spinoff as well as an Arkham series. Don't forget, that's still in the works. And post James Gunn acquiring the DCU and loving everything that he was doing, well, he said he's going to be taking it and going all in. Who do you think the Arkham series is going to follow, considering that it's going to feature the Batman's rogues gallery and it's being described as horror in tone? Now, the Arkham series was supposed to be a part of Matt Reeves' Batman universe, you know, Robert Pattinson and all that. But James Gunn liked it so much that he's going to make it part of the James Gunn universe continuity. It's crazy to think that the Scarecrow made his third appearance in 1967 when his first appearance was in World's Finest Issue 3 from 1941, and then his second appearance and first cover appearance was on Detective Comics 71 in 1943. It took over 20 years for him to grace the pages of comic books, and he came back as a full villain looking so horrific. We have a 4.0 going for 276, an increase of 3%, a 5.5 up 13%, a 6.5 up 14%, and a 7.5 just sold for $927 for an increase of 29%, where you could have purchased it for under $700 for the last year. It's kind of tough when those characters first originate in the golden age and they become unobtainable, so you got to settle for that Silver Age appearance. Just like number eight on the list, we've got Avengers 4, the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Captain America was only on Atlas and Timely comic covers prior to Avengers number four, marking this as his first Marvel Comics official appearance on a Marvel comic book. It's his first Silver Age appearance. It's when he joins the Avengers and gets thawed out of that ice. And Marvel, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I don't know what Marvel's planning to do with their upcoming Avengers 5 movie. It seems like they don't have any Avengers to assemble for this movie. Let's not forget about this book at a 9.8 going for $108,000 this past January, which lifted the floor of lower grades of the Silver Age Captain America key. Well, a leaker, an insider, had this to say about Avengers 5, and it's looking grim. And I really think it gives us some things to think about as it pertains to the future of the MCU. 
The Avengers are disassembled, so to speak. Every hero is currently out doing their own thing. Captain America has his own team with Falcon. Bucky will be busy handling the Thunderbolts. She-Hulk's busy playing lawyer. Doctor Strange is off on his own with Clea. Thor is off-world with Gore's daughter. Valkyrie is taking care of new Asgard. Scott is spending time with his family. The Scarlet Witch is resting. Vision is on a journey of self-exploration. And Hawkeye's retired. Yeah, and this is where I'm getting worried because the only potential active Avengers right now are Wong, Captain Marvel, Bruce Banner, Shang-Chi, and Katie. You know, Aquafina. It's looking grim, but this book is awesome. Let's talk about the prices. A 1.5 is up 4%, 2.5, 9%, 4.5, 13%. The 5.0 sold for $1,899 for an increase of 8%. And what's this? Frick -a -frick -a golden record reprint, the CGC 8.5, sold for $660. 42% up above its 12 month average. Hit the like button. I saved that golden record reprint line for Jim at the list at number seven. The Crow number one, one of my favorite comic books of all time. Everyone needs to read this series. And it's the second appearance of The Crow. Do you know the first appearance is Jim? What's funny is you called me the other day and I didn't pick up. What did I text you? Yo, you texted me that you were watching The Crow with the family. That right there deserves an applause, comic fam. That's some good parenting. Yeah, my daughter wanted to see it because the upcoming movie, which nobody seems to be liking, but we wanted to show her the original, so we were watching the movie. The 7.0 sold for $700, 23% above its 12-month average, catching up to the 8.0, which just sold at average $725. The third printing 8.5 is up 12%. The regular 9.2 is up 4%. The 9.4 sold for $1,545. 14% above average. And then we've got some third and second printings. The third printing, 9.4, sold for 550 for an increase of 31%. And then we have the first recorded sale of a second printing, 7.5, selling for 241. If you're looking for the first appearance in comic form, in advertisement on the back cover, you're looking for Dead World issue number 10. And there's a variant that's scarcer featuring that same advertisement for Eric Draven, the Crow. Then fast forward to his first appearance in Caliber Presents number one. That right there is the first in-story Crow appearance. And then you have the second appearance here on Crow number one, in which there are three printings made. Keep an eye out for that inside Indica for the date. That's how you can tell the differences between these printings. And regardless on how much the fandom is divided on whether or not this was even needed as a new movie, the book is still hot. It went from the trending list to the hot 10. I've already mentioned that I have a major bias in regards to this, and I can't wait to see Skarsgård portray Eric Draven on the screen. But how did you feel watching this trailer for the first time, Jem? Because it's very different in tone than the first crack at the movie i didn't like the look of him it didn't feel like the crow it felt more like jared leto joker than anything else but i did like the scene where he pulls the sword out of his chest or he shoots the guy by shooting himself that was dope i like 30 seconds to mars american psycho dare i say i enjoyed jared leto joker i am not the person to report on this number. Next on the list at number six, Uncanny X-Men 101. This is when Jean Grey debuts her new powers as the Phoenix. And this cover is so popular and it's so classic that I even had to make an homage for my own comic book, Crash Down, on an ash can for New York City Comic Con. And I still get asked about that one to this day. It's sold out, but you can get your hands on Crash Down issue three at a comic shop near you this week. It comes out this week. Support our first indie published work. I love that homage. And last September, this book made the list for five consecutive weeks in a row, and it didn't make sense. We've already seen the Phoenix in live action multiple times, but I think the animation is what's making this book hot. Now, light spoilers, but you should have already seen X-Men 97 by now, but if you watched through episode two, you know that there are two Jean Greys, which can only mean one thing, Madeline Pryor clone stuff is going down and this book is moving up because of the resurgence and the full nostalgia cycle the 4.0 is up 10 percent the 5.0 is up 12 percent the 6.0 is up 5 percent and two copies outsold the average same with the 8.5 it sold for 664 dollars an increase of 15 percent two copies outperformed the 9.4 is up 12% and the 9.6 sold for $2,266. That's a year high, a 24% increase over its 12 month average and two copies outdid the average as well. What did you think about the X-Men 97 episodes that dropped Jam? Because number five on the list is more of the same with giant size X-Men number one, the first appearance of the new team. 
Man, it's a tough one for me, too, because I literally grew up watching that. That was Saturday morning cartoons for me. I'm an old guy, but I think they did the original animated series justice. And if you want more of X-Men 97, check out my review for issue one, the comic book prequel that's on sale now. The 1.5 is up 9%, just like the 3.0. The 5.5 sold for $2,000, up 8%. And the 8.5 sold for $3,840 for an increase of 3%. And what's this? We have a year Long high for a CGC 9.6, also selling two different copies this past week. The top being $11,545 for an increase of 9%. X-Men is hot as hell. And who would have thought the X-Men 97 series would be affecting comics so much? Because it's so nostalgic and they're doing a good job, it's even more reason to pick up this book. We still haven't even had the live-action X-Men in the MCU mapped out yet, so I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see this book for months, maybe even years to come. This is one of those hot blue chip keys that is a great indicator of the market because this is one of the first ones that clearly hit a floor. This book in January sold for $22,200. It's only sold four times in the last year, which is about 60% less times than we see a 9.8 hit the market. This book has gone down so much from its heights of $72,000 that it's not coming up for availability because people are clearly holding it. This book has hit the floor. It looks like owners of those high-grade copies are waiting for the economy to take a turn before they start to sell. Join the mystery mail call and help our economy thrive throughout this tough time. <laughs> I'm just joking. We're doing fine, but give us an excuse to send you some funny books every month. It's the best way to support the channel. And this month, we have a Black Cat number one, Dan Panosian, dual jackpot cover with Mary Jane Jackpot and Black Cat both gracing it. Peter's hit the jackpot twice this month, and you can too. And we're going to add a Deadpool number one ASM 300 in each box as well. ComicTom101.com. Support the show. The boxes go out on the 15th of April and get comic books from us. As we move on to number four on the list, I haven't seen this one hit the list in a while. Amazing Spider-Man 129, the first appearance of the Jackal, but more importantly, the first appearance of Frank Castle, the Punisher. Now, there's a leak that has been circulating on the internet that we haven't talked about on the mic because we're so excited about Daredevil Born Again, we don't want to spoil anything for you. So if you want to figure this out, go do the search yourself. But the leak shows a character shooting another superhero. It doesn't look good for the other superhero, but what it does look good for is Frank Castle fans. Now, it's not confirmed that this character doing the murder, the muck duck, is Indeed, John Bernthal could be another character, but it also could be a reprisal of the role. What I can tell you without spoiling is that I like the direction that they're going <laughs> in. It's giving us that dark, gritty tone. It's pretty dark, Jem. Dude isn't looking too healthy after meeting up with this person. But what is looking healthy are the current sales. A CGC 2.5 entry-level ASM 129 selling for $749. That's 2% above its average. The 3.0 is up 15%. The 4.5 sold for a grand, 4% above its 12-month average. The 5.5 is up 6%. The 6.0 is up 9%. And two copies outdid the average, just like the 8.0, which sold for $2,100, 5% above its average. And not one, but two 8.0s outdid that average this past week, which moves us over to number three on the list with a repeat offender that has been on the list so many times over this last year, but now I feel warrants being on here because of investment and speculation, because of a show that has finally debuted in trailer. We have Star Wars number one to discuss. The first appearance of pretty much everyone you care about. Finally, there's a reason for this book to hit the list besides it being super affordable, but the Acolyte trailer hit. It's a story that takes place 100 years before the Clone Wars. The Jedi are in full control. More opportunities to see action and lightsaber duels than probably any other Star Wars anything, which also means there's probably going to be less Senate meetings. There's probably going to be a lot of Senate meetings. I mean, it is Star Wars, but probably less. The 4.5 is up 7%. The 8.0, 14%. The 8.5, in which two copies outsold the 12-month average, the highest up 21% for a sale of 361. Shout out Cletus. The 9.2 is up 8%. Two copies outsold that 12-month average for a high sale of $449. The 9.4 is up 11%. The 9.6, you can get it for under $1,000 still. But it's still up 3%, selling for $960, and two copies outsold that 12-month average, and a 9.8 just sold for $4,000. That's an increase of 5% where people were securing this for, like, in the $3,000 range, but closer to the $3,500 range all year long. 
Moving on to number two on the list, we finally have some new promo art from Deadpool and Wolverine. And you know New Mutants 98 had to make the list. Take a look at this announcement showing multiple multiverse characters of Deadpool right front and center. From left to right, we have Baby Pool, Kid Pool, Deadpool, Dog Pool, and Head Pool. We had speculated we were going to see some of these characters. We knew that others were inbound. This right here just cements the fact that there are multiverse characters, and it doesn't have to stop with Deadpool. You know it's got to happen with Wolverine. Yeah, we're getting the Deadpool core. We know we're getting Patch. Was that Henry Cavill? And we have this dope Wolverine image in his classic yellow and blue, and Sninked is spelled out behind all those Deadpool characters. The 9-2 is up 6%, and two different copies outsold that recent 12-month average and take a look at this this is a price hike that's typically only reserved for nine sixes at best but we do have a newsstand nine two selling for a hundred and forty dollars more than the direct 9.2 for an increase of 31 percent and two different copies outsold that 12 month average as well the 9.4 is up 22 percent the 9.6 is up 11 percent and eight copies outperformed that 12 month average a newsstand 9.6 sold for about its 12-month average, $733, and a 9.8 sold for $1,920, 37% above average. I do think that $1,900 sale was way aggressive and someone probably overpaid a bit because this book was trending around the $1,500 marker all year long, and someone just grabbed one for $1,300 this past week. But it's not because of speculation being kind of soft or investment being pessimistic. No, nah, it's because the CGC count of high-grade copies has been on the uptick ever since this book went back on collector's radar because of Deadpool 3. It doesn't hurt that Rob Liefeld's heading to Sarasota to do a CGC signing. I think a lot of people are prepping for that as well. But in the last week, we have seen an increase of over 30 copies graded of this book added to the census, three of which were at a 9.8. Make sure you guys stick around till after the hottest book in the world because we're going to do the Q1 rankings, the first quarter hottest of the hot. We compiled all of the books that we've been talking about for the first three months of the year, and we put them in ranking order. I could imagine this book is going to be on there as well somewhere where we have Deadpool's first appearance at number two, Wolverine's first solo series, Wolverine 1, is number one, the hottest comic book in the world. Basically, every single grade between mid-grade on up is trending above average. There are so many sales. Do yourself a solid and see them all over on Key Collector Comics, the best app in existence to catalog comics, learn about funny books, and get all the data that we report on prior to us even hitting the mic. Use code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription. Support what we do. And let's jump into it with, I don't know, I'm going to skip over half of these sales. The 9.6 is selling for $300 for an increase of 14% and six copies outsold that recent 12-month average. And the newsstand 9.6 sold for $100 more, coming in at $400. That's 14% above average. And then we have the 9.8. $700 sale puts it 5% above its 12-month average and three copies outperformed this week. The Frank Miller signing is Friday, April 19th, so make sure to get your books into CGC if you want to get those Frank Miller SIGs, especially on this hot-as-hell comic book. We know the TVA has been featured in trailer in Deadpool 3, which likely means that we're going to be seeing a narrative that is going to be focused on Nexus beings. Could Deadpool be a Nexus being? And if you haven't been following Disney+, Plus, you know, haven't been following Loki— Unfortunately, what happened with Kang, I digress, you would know that a Nexus being removed from the timeline can end a universe, and we know that Deadpool is likely going to be ending the Fox universe. Could this be the catalyst? Could Deadpool be a Nexus being? It's all starting to make a lot of sense. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and now we're going to jump into the quarter one hottest of the hot. These 10 books should be on every dealer's wall at conventions. Tom, kick us off with number 10. Number 10 on the list is Wolverine 88, the first battle between Deadpool and Wolverine. And we're just going to say in general this book because there are three different versions of it. All three are hot as hell. It's made the hot 10 three different times, and the highest placements it's reached is two on our list. Number nine on the list is Omega Men 3, the first appearance of Lobo, which dominated in 2023. It made the hot 10 four times so far this year, coming in at number nine, eight, four, and three. Number eight on the list is Amazing Spider-Man 210, first appearance of Madam Web. The highest it reached was placing fourth on our hot 10. It's made the list four different times, and I don't think it's ever coming back, unless the book keeps plunging. Then maybe it'll show up higher on the list or lower. Who knows? 
I would be surprised if it showed back up on the list. Number seven, we have Godzilla 1, also made four appearances this year, but it did come in at number one one week. And this past week, I announced my very first Godzilla cover because I love Minus One. I know there's a new movie coming out. I didn't do it for that, even though I should say I did. It's all about Godzilla Minus One, and I teamed up with Lucio Pario on this cover, and pre-sale is is now on comictom101.store. Number six, we have Iron Fist 14, and I don't even remember talking about Sabretooth for five weeks, but it came in at number seven, six, and number five. Deadpool 3 leaks are causing books to spike from the Bronze Age, and I like it. And we're looking at number five with nothing to do with cinema and everything to do with just ongoing comics being so damn good. Transformers number one, the Energon universe, seven appearances, and the highest this book has ranked is number three on our list. And it's a combination of G.I. Joe, Void Rivals, uh, Full Nostalgia Swing, and a stellar comic book. Pick up Transformers. Number four on the list is Star Wars Issue 1, which was on this week's list. And I mentioned it had been hitting the list multiple times for no apparent reason. Seven appearances, to be exact, coming in at the lowest at number four and number two at the highest. Affordability is a hell of a thing in regards to this list. Looking more like a buy list with some of these books and number three on the list. And... I'm just going to foreshadow it because you know what the top two are going to be are ranked because of hotness, availability, and because of Deadpool 3. We have Uncanny X-Men 130, the first appearance of Dazzler. Taylor Swift at number three. Is the spec starting to get a little light? I don't know, but it, she has made our list nine different times and has ranked on the hot 10 at the number one spot twice this year so far. New Mutants 98, Deadpool's first appearance, also had nine appearances on the Hot 10, but it made number one three times. Which brings us to the number one hottest book, not just in the world right now, but of the year thus far. And it's because of Wolverine being the co-star of Deadpool 3. It's because of Hugh Jackman's role being reprised. It's because of Frank Miller signing. That can't hurt. And the fact that this book is cheaper than the former two. Ranking at number one five different times this year so far, and a total of nine times. Times, and the lowest this book has ever ranked on the Hot 10 this year was three. What do you think about this list? What do you think about these books? Are you buying any? Do you own any? And as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said.